of all the ads we do here on No Dunks, the number one question we get from y'all, hands down, is whether Magic Spoon cereal is actually as good and as healthy as we say it is. I get it. You're skeptical. You say skeets. How could a cereal that has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving taste so good? You say Lily. How could a cereal that only has 140 calories a serving taste so good? You say Tassie! You say Trey! You say JD! How could a cereal that's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb taste so good? The answer to all of this, of course, is magic. Capital M. Build your own box, people. Magic Spoon. Available flavors to build your very own custom bundle are cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, blueberry, cinnamon, cookies and cream, and maple waffle. Delicious, but nutritious cereals. You ain't gotta feel guilty about that midnight snack anymore. So go to magicspoon.com slash no dunks to grab a custom bundle of cereal and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code no dunks at checkout to save $5 off your order. Magic Spoon, so confident in their product, so cocky almost, that it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash no dunks and use that code no dunks to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring another classic. podcast because tonight we truly are a live tribal yes no buffs coming at you just minutes after watching episode 10 of survivor 41 aka the greatest show ever i'm je skeets with my fellow tribe members we got the bearded one trey kirby hey yo hey yo and of course no dunk super producer jd hello there he is no jason conception on tonight because he hasn't even watched the episode yet <laughs> yeah he's a west coast guy and it's Thanksgiving tomorrow here in the States, so decisions had to be made. JC was sacrificed. <laughs> we had to snuff his torch uh, just for this episode. So uh, yeah, yeah, We sent him to exile. We just sent him to Exile yeah, Islander. Right? That's true. I mean, yeah. we give him a chance to find an idol or to find like an hourglass <laughs> that he can smash and come back. So, yeah. Um, I hope he doesn't smash the hourglass and we have to re-record the podcast next weekend. <laughs> right? uh, yeah. Maybe no, so. Let's, let's hope not. Uh, a great episode to talk about. I will say here, if you've stumbled upon us for some reason and you are a, a West Coast Survivor fan, maybe you're an international Survivor fan, you haven't watched the episode yet, well, get out of here, okay? You know, spoilers <laughs> abound. We're going to be talking about the entire episode, episode 10, again, of Survivor 41. And wow, we had a, well, we had a, a legend go home, if we're, if we're being honest. So uh, we'll leave it at that. Give you all a second to get out of here. Again, if you've just sort of like, I don't know, you thought this was no dunks or something like that. Okay. <laughs> Into the episode, guys. Night 17, via Kana. Ricard tells the story about voting Nasir out. We have Erica realizing, hmm, Shan, she's a threat to win. Worried about the idol, though. Erica and Deshaun, they have a little powwow. They want at least one idol gone. I mean, come on. Like, yeah. it's amazing these idols are still here. Xander's got one. Shan's got one. Let's at least flush one of these out or at least blindside one of them. And one of them goes like Nasir. And then Deshaun, talking about Shan, to us says, I'm smart enough to know she can win this game. Foreshadowing like crazy here in this episode, uh, TK, right from the jump. Because we also have Shan saying, I don't trust Deshaun. Completely. Oh, you don't want to talk to anybody in this episode <laughs> lest you not be trusted. Yeah. I mean, I'm under the cover of darkness, perhaps that provides a little bit of uh, secrecy, but going out to talk in the middle of the night, of course, that's going to raise some antennas. And that's exactly what happened with Shan. But as it played out, you know, Erica, Shan, Deshaun, and as we'll get to soon, I'm sure Ricard driving a lot in this episode, 
This was a fun one. This was a banger. It started at the beginning. It seemed like we were getting set up for some sort of big confrontation between a bunch of these power players. And it was basically an hour of confrontation between the power yeah. players. A really, really fun episode. Yeah, I almost couldn't believe, JD, that it delivered on the promise of, I know. of one of them backstabbing each other. And then, oh yeah, Deshaun, of course, is in, in the mix too, and he does as well. I was like, oh man, they're just doing all of this. Especially once Ricard won immunity. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh God. So it's like, we're literally getting a, a Heather going home right. or someone lower on the pecking order. And it was like, this was all for naught. But uh, no, you know, we get Ricard saying, well, I'm going to strike first. Here's the opportunity. Let's blindside her. I, I almost can't believe it. And I can't believe Shannon's gone. I know it's, uh, it's sad, uh, but also it was time. And, uh, but as you say, like it totally lived up to the hype that w I think we were hyping it up. We were hoping for this uh, epic showdown and it's exactly what we got. It was like, everything was almost revealed in the trailer and it still delivered somehow. It was mm -hmm. awesome. I loved it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I thought the showdown was going to be a little juicier though, but uh, this was probably always how it was going to have to go where one of them just completely blindsided the other uh, and the other was clueless about it. I, 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 you know, cause I remember we talked about like them building their armies and like right. really trying to like, you know, pull this vote here, pull this vote there. I wonder how much, uh, of Shan going home in this episode had to do with Ricard winning immunity. I think when you win huh. that, you got you just feel a little looser. You got a little more, right. you're a little more drunk on power because you're not going anywhere, Trey. And like, I think that can allow you to be a little more uh, bold, let's say in your, in your game plan or your decisions in taking your shot. Cause you, at least you're not going anywhere if it, if it backfires. A hundred percent. That's the time to be aggressive and try and set your own agenda out there. As almost everybody said at the at tribal council this week, uh, when you're playing survivor, you're completely focused on yourself, right? You're the protagonist of the story. So you're trying to figure out yep. how do I relate to every other person in this game? Where am I in the power structure of everything? And everybody always thinks they're at the bottom is what it sounds like. At least when mm -hmm. you get to final eight or whatever number that they're, going into and everybody's getting nervous but they all feel like they're at the bottom unless you do have the actual immunity yeah. necklace around your neck right that's a time when you're like unless i do something completely stupid something that people are going to remember forever i at least feel great for this episode it's yep. different than having an idol in your pocket as we saw yep. that can give you some confidence it can give you too much confidence but you know for sure if you've actually won the challenge so yeah i think as soon as ricard pulled off the win with the old wobbly pedestal that was when the writing was really on the wall for shan yeah for sure okay so day 18 this is uh after the blow up or at least the powwow as i called it uh after tribal council of night 17 day 18 raining hard jd everyone looks yep. miserable mm -hmm. um you know oh god imagine living on an island for a couple weeks and then it's just piss and rain and all you want to do is like like backstab each other and talk <laughs> yeah. about each other. And you can't even really do that because you're just stuck in the same shelter. But we have Shan asking Deshaun, and they do this a lot. <laughs> I feel like we've had this like three episodes running now where they see something happening and then they get together or they piss each other off and then they get together the next day. And like, okay, let's talk about that. Are we cool? We're cool. We're cool. All right, we're cool. And that's exactly what they did. Hey, you were talking to Erica. What up with that? And I thought this was a really cool scene. Both of them talking to us this like this dilemma that mm -hmm. they both were like wearing quite heavy. I thought of like, do it for the culture or do it for yourself. And culture being like the black community had talked about this black Alliance, the, the camp out as a lot of people were calling them here. And they are just like, they're just torn over what they should do. And ultimately Deshaun, you know, makes his decision, but man, I thought this was a great, great scene. Just like you could tell, like they're legit, like they don't want to do it. They see an opportunity to have four of them in the final and then turn mm -hmm. it on each other or, or, you know, battle it out, I guess would be a better way to put it. But also like, especially in Deshaun's case, like I'm never going to beat her if I'm, if I'm there. So I, I have to get greedy and I have to like <laughs> turn on her. And then they come up with reasons why to turn on each other, which is always favorite. Like, well, oh, she snitched on me. So no, now no. you're dead to me. But yeah. what do you think, JD? I mean, yeah, yeah. It was, it's great television. i I legit felt for them. I thought that the pressure was enormous on, on them, on the, all four of them to keep this Alliance going for as the culture, as they say. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, we, we, we all want to see 
we're all happy about the diversity of this season and we're all, uh, you know, I, I want to see a woman win. We've had, I think, uh, 20, uh, 24 men and uh, the rest women. So that's, and we're on a crazy male run right now too. Right. I think they've right. won the last six. I don't have it in front of me, but it's, yeah. a, it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And we've had four black winners. So, you know, that's 10%. So mm-hmm. it's a, it's a little underrepresented. I mean, Asian, we've only had one, as far as I know, you will. Um, so that's very underrepresented. And we've, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, we've had one Sri Lankan, Natalie, well, all this to say, uh, there's, they put a lot of pressure on themselves and, re- you know, and I felt, I felt for them and, uh, I, I felt bad that they had all this pressure because at, at a certain point you have to just play survivor and, you, and, you know, they both have reasons that they want to win the game of survivor. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I hope they don't feel bad about things falling apart. It looks like there's going to be fireworks in the next episode. Uh, Leanna definitely seems extremely b- betrayed. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's, it's a game for a million dollars and it's an individual game. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I felt bad for them. Yeah. <laughs> it's just way, it's Sean- just, the, the, the game is so pressure filled as it is. And to just bring the out, like, uh, culture into it. Uh, it. It's just, it's just too much. Like it broke them. It seemed. Oh yeah. Deshaun was getting very emotional in that confession yeah. there, Trey. I mean, he was mad torn, like really conflicted. You could tell Shan is telling us like, I'm not a liar. I'm set to go to the final four. I don't, I don't really believe her. I think she's just a, a, a you know, a, an incredible liar. <laughs> I mean, she even said this at some point in tribal council, like we're all liars here. It's like, right. mm-hmm. just, uh, you know, are you going to work with that other liar for a couple for this vote, at least to move forward? Um, but yeah, what'd you, what'd you think of just this sort of uh, what we're calling a pretty, pretty powerful sort of scenes here from the two of them, Shannon, Deshaun. Yeah, it was super powerful. There were a few of these sort of moments throughout the episode, I thought, and I thought, think it was awesome to see because it's like it's a fun moment to watch as a viewer right you're seeing these people put into a situation where they don't know how it's going to play out and certainly none of these four Liana Shan uh Ricard or sorry Deshaun and Danny none of these four probably thought I'm going to be able to get into an all-black alliance and actually have a chance to make that matter in the game right like they could have easily ended up on the same tribe early on and you know it's just the four of them and there's still 18 other people around mm-hmm. or something like that yeah. but they've got half the tribe right now and you could tell that this is a big responsibility that they're feeling and they were both taking it seriously and it's not only like a bonding moment for them to have there it's also a strategic moment and i just thought it was really really interesting to see and especially to see the way it played out Throughout the entire episode, we had the moments between uh, Leanna and Shan that I thought were also as powerful. Yeah. We had Ricard and Shan, like, we they keep getting called uh, an old married couple, but we never see the parts when they're in love. And we actually got to see the part <laughs> where they were kind of in love. Yeah, yeah. Getting there at the fire at the Survivor Sanctuary. I thought that uh, this was probably my favorite episode of the season, just because there is so much, like, real world stuff coming into it rather than just advantages and gameplay and numbers and voting blocks and alliances, you can tell that, yeah, these people are playing the game right now for 26 days, but clearly this matters a lot more to them than while they're there for a month. Yeah. Well, let's get to the reward challenge. Uh, This was the old thing where you had to run an obstacle course while attached by a rope. And uh, then you had to finish what appeared to be a very difficult like 3d star puzzle uh, I'm sure it didn't look easy to me i think i would have struggled with that one yeah. uh the reward is uh yeah a chance to go to the the sanctuary <laughs> <laughs> uh pizza under the stars folks kept saying <laughs> i mean it was actually it was actually really lame in the end like it sounds great but they i didn't see one single star I, maybe it was cloudy that night And we didn't really even see a whole lot from them, like eating the pizza and and hanging out outside of this fun little, like Ricard and and Shan little scene uh, where they're talking to each other. Basically like, we gotta, we gotta turn on each other. What are we doing here? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We're going to backstab each other. Right. Yeah. But not now. Okay. But we are right. Yeah, we are Uh, really, really weird. But yeah, they got to spend a night in a warm shelter too, blankets and pillows. We didn't see any of that. No. Uh, Like it was so quick. Like it sounds like a great, great reward, but uh, didn't really get a, a whole lot of it. Well, it probably uh, probably rained the whole time. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, like there, it's been raining all day, Jeff. You're but you're telling us we're gonna eat pizza under the stars. Thanks a lot, man. <laughs> like, put us up in the Four Seasons or something, you know. But 
Yeah. I, I, again, uh, the, the, the moment, the takeaway moment was, uh, was uh, between Ricard and Shannon, you know, and that's really all we needed, I guess. It didn't, didn't seem like they were planting any advantages or uh, mm-hmm. doing any of that stuff. Uh, the real drama was who's who's Ricard going to pick? Who's 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 yeah. bringing on this thing? And I was I was a little surprised that Heather went along. I'm not sure if that was out of pity or out of strategy, but uh, <laughs> did he mention it? I, I don't I don't think so. I mean, yeah, well, yeah, so he wins this thing like JD saying, and he gets to, uh, he gets to pick three people to, to go and have pizza under the stars with. Uh, we <laughs> I like this uh, comment from Kyle at, uh, in the live tribe who said they used to do like two days on a private yacht. Now it's yeah. like, <laughs> here's a yeah. pizza. Here's a pizza. It might be raining. Yeah. yeah. The pizza hasn't been getting good reviews on uh, Rob Sesternino's podcast as well. And Xander was not <laughs> bragging on how good the pizza was. No. To mm. Probes too. No. They were Give all the huddled pretty stew. closely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> potatoes. Um, Do you have potatoes Xander, on this pizza? Xander in the challenge got <laughs> caught up in the rope. So he was uh, sort of playing from behind. It came down to Deshaun and Ricard. Ricard wins it. And then, yeah, in order, he takes Shan. Reason being, of course, they're they're you know they're tied at the hip and they've been there since day one together, and she hasn't won anything like any sort of reward. That's uh, you know his reasoning to us. He says the same for Heather, right? Doesn't that what he says? He picks her that she hasn't hadn't had a chance to to win much or eat much food. I think that's what I he believe said. he said that. Yeah. yeah, I think so. And then his final one is Xander, and he he says the reason for that was you know this guy like stepped out of challenges twice for the for the the greater good of the tribe and especially mm-hmm. to get rice so we owe this guy some veggie pizza even though it's not <laughs> stew uh, or or yeah. it's just i need to keep this guy where i can see him you know like uh well that that was jeff Prope's uh little strategy question uh in the game within the game last week jd if you remember mm-hmm. last week's episode mm-hmm. here on no buffs i said uh that's what that's what Propes was saying he's like you win a reward you're late in the game what do you do you take in your alliance because proves that you're tight, you're good, or you're taking some of the other people so they can't be like plotting and scheming uh, when they're when they're back not having pizza under the stars like you are. So I guess he he got I mean not lucky, but he got to pick three people. So mm-hmm. you know he sort of got to do a little bit of both. It felt like. And sure. Dan Danny said <laughs> he said right away no reason to apologize because Ricard did the right thing. He said like I'm sorry guys, you know I wish we could take everybody or whatever. I'm sorry. <laughs> but then Danny right away tells us like. To us, to the camera, is like, yeah, d- he's too dangerous. Like Danny is all in on Ricard. Like he's winning this game if he's if he's still around, and his whole plan is to get rid of him. That's going to backfire when uh, when we get to it because he's going to win immunity. But yeah, uh, any uh, any other notes from the sanctuary there? Uh, well, we actually haven't even got to the scene where they're there, but this reward challenge tray. Any any notes? Would you be good at the? Uh, the rope maneuvering part? Uh, the going over and underneath the bars for sure. The wraparound part, uh, usually it feels like they just like whip their bodies over it a yeah. few times. That I would not be very good at, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it would be fun to try, no doubt. Um, Danny also says about Ricard after he chooses Shan, Heather, and Xander, he says he's doing it for jury votes. Yeah, that's true. Which, I mean, maybe. I mean, to me, with Ricard, I don't think anything is by chance. Like, Sure, he's saying Shan, you know, because she hasn't had a reward, but it is because they're very close to each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that he would rather have uh, Heather and Xander along with him, too, just so that they don't start getting in closer to Shan or getting in closer to to the other three that are part of her alliance as well to try and build a plan against him. So I don't completely buy that it's just for jury votes or for strategy. I just think he is in... It's taking all of that into account and he's just doing it super quickly. So like, I don't know. I'm with Danny on that one where he's like, this isn't, you're apologizing, but you're doing moves here. You oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's forced to do a move. So yeah. yeah. Uh, but I mean, if Heather says in the final episode, I'm voting for you, Ricard, because you gave me pizza under the stars. <laughs> oh my God. I, I mean, I would never JD if I played survivor ever, ever, ever be giving my vote to someone because they took me out of reward challenge. Yeah. Like, there's no way. Yeah. Well, you don't need to worry about Heather voting for anybody because she will not be on the jury and she'll That's be sitting point. next to Ricard or whomever it is True. at the end there. 
that's, that's, good point. That, that's so oh maybe she'll be sitting at the end with ricard and she'll be like you know what don't vote for me i'd rather <laughs> you vote for pizza. ricard he gave me pizza under the stars and a, a nice warm night in a shelter um all right well the loser's back at camp we get that scene it's danny deshaun erica and liana and this is where danny tells deshaun look we got to get rid of ricard um <laughs> then, then they fold in liana i thought this was a hilarious scene I think it's Danny goes, someone's gaining a lot of steam. And Liana goes, Shan. Like, no. She goes, Erica. They're like, no. Ricard? She literally goes, Ricard? Like question mark? Yeah. Wow. Like a hundred question of, marks. Running out of people to name because Danny and Deshaun are right in front of you. Like It's like, it's either Ricard or it's going to be Heather. That's the only other possible name left. Uh, I guess Xander, I guess too. Um, I thought that was so funny, JD, uh, showing that she's maybe a little, she's not thinking uh, the same way Danny and Deshaun are, at least of Ricard. Liana's not. No, and she's, I really started, I, again, uh, Liana, I started so high on, and but now she's very, very low for me in the power mm -hmm. rankings, just because if you don't recognize at this point that Ricard is a, is a major threat, then there's a problem. There's a, there's a big problem. And, uh, and I also, <laughs> the range of emotions that she went to went through, she's listing down those names, landing on Ricard, and then going to her confessional to be like, I don't want to be told, like, I don't want to be told what to do. But, and then by the end of that confessional, she was like, I'm taking full credit for voting out Ricard because that's my <laughs> big move against Shan. It was just like, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> it's just such a push and pull of like, you know, I want to make really big. This is everybody in the game, by the way. It's I want to make huge moves, but nobody ever wants to say a name. Right. Nobody yeah. wants to come out and say, well, I think we should get rid of Shan or I think we should get a, get rid of Ricard because that automatically puts target on your back. But then it's just like, well, I don't want to be told what to do. Somebody actually comes forward with a plan and they're just like. All right, well, I'm going to take credit. I'm taking full credit. This is going to be my move now. It's just like, what are, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, <laughs> like, I think the way to do it uh is how erica did it in this episode with the whole at tribal councils basically talking to shan like hey we did that in this year move yeah yeah i mean did i miss something like uh i don't really <laughs> remember erica being all that much a part of it but she obviously was i mean she's a vote totally. she does seem to be a bit of a mastermind they, danny is like convinced she's like brilliant and could win this game mm -hmm. and i i don't think we're seeing her whole story out there we yeah. haven't through through 10 episodes but like that's the way to do it, right? It's like, especially just just proclaim it. Uh, yeah. It's like, even if it's not really that true, I guess it has to be a little bit true for other people to be like, you didn't do shit, Erica. Like, Shan agreed. She's like, yeah. Yeah, she yeah. did agree. And it, what was that her being diplomatic or was, or, or was it her actually agreeing? It doesn't matter. That's no. why it's so diabolical. It's just like, I'm playing, I'm... The jury is sitting right there, and I'm agreeing with you, Erica. You played a major role in blindsiding Nasir, and that's just good. That's just good tribal counsel. Like that's yeah. that's just that's a great move. So, uh, yeah, I, as you say, I I'm very much seeing the threat that Erica is. Oh, <laughs> I was going to ask you that. I, I didn't want to jump ahead, but I saw people in the uh, in the stream team, the live tribe, as we call it, uh, in the comments here on YouTube, joining us live here on a Wednesday night. People saying. Starting to convince themselves, could Erica do this? Could she be sitting at the end and actually warrant enough votes? I'm not sure, Trey. And I'm actually, with Shan going home, I am like, wow, we're having another man win this? Like, we're going to rank that, get that up to, what again, whatever it is, six or seven in a row? Because I, I can't, with Shan gone now, I can't picture an Erica or a Heather or a Liana winning. Mm. But Erica, I guess, <laughs> would be at the top of those three women's chances to pull. Oh, by, by far. And yeah. right now, at the very least, Erica, depending on who is there at final tribal console, she could make a pitch where she says, I was the mastermind of the Shan vote out, which would be huge. That's a big yep. time move. Yep. And she at least gets partial credit for the Nasir vote out. That's yep. a big move as well. Yep. And she obviously used the shillelagh of time to <laughs> <laughs> travel through time and reverse the course of history in the game. That's Those big. are three That's big, big moves, right? I mean... <laughs> They don't, they didn't seem like big moves, particularly in this year. Like we didn't really know exactly how Erica's in on it. Yeah. She didn't have much of a choice for breaking the hourglass, but right. those are three notable events and getting Shan out is a big time move. Breaking up uh, 
the four black players alliance is a big move as well. And my guess has to be that when she was there on the blue tribe, on Lubu tribe, before they got to emerge, they never went to tribal councils. But she must have been like pitching ideas, right? To yeah. the Sean and Danny, like, if we lose this one, here's what we could do. Yeah. Because yeah. why else would they be thinking she's super smart and sneaky? Right. And then we see other, you know, footage of her actually being smart about it and coming up with this great plan to split the votes yeah. and bringing in another person to split the votes and actually getting it done. Really impressive stuff. So. Maybe she is a really great strategic player. She just didn't get a chance to show it through the first yeah. half of the season. I think that's ac- like absolutely true. I think that's exactly what's happening here. Uh, and she's also won um, uh, an immunity uh, immunity yeah. challenge, right? I mean, it was one where two people could win, but that's something. You know, that's uh, that's on the resume there, JD. Totally. It's uh, right after knowing, um, you know, PowerPoint, and Microsoft <laughs> Word. That's where you put it. Uh, but it's good. So I'm still skeptical, but. Yeah, I guess it's in play. And hey, there's still a lot of game to play as well, right? Well, there's I mean, a week. There's a week of play out there left on the island. Right, but there's seven wow. players left. There's seven players left in so, seven days. Yep. I yep. mean, I mean, we only have three episodes left, right? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. They usually, have. it's usually down to five or five on the last episode, right? So. Yeah, that's yeah, that's true. That's um, sense. So look, I guess I guess she's uh. Could could pull this off. Uh, just uh, quickly before we take our first break, we had the sanctuary there. We said, uh, I, I, <laughs> I, I, this was great. I couldn't believe that Shannon and Ricard were having this conversation, like this playful, like, you know, uh, we've never said we're the final two to each other. Mm-hmm. We're tight. I love you. But we are going to turn on each other, <laughs> right? Like we're the biggest threat. Like they were having that convo right there beside heather and xander i which i just thought was like what were they talking about yeah yeah exactly yeah. Could we could see the like what, <laughs> like, what this, this pizza sucks yeah uh but <laughs> yeah and, and it must have been super cold and rainy you're right jd because they were all sitting like yeah. on a love seat together some sanctuary mm-hmm. yeah and then and then to top that off jd oh my god chan starts singing her you know, evil theme song, I guess, right? Yeah. Uh, as we've, as you know, a hell of a callback to like the first or second episode. I almost thought there's like no way she's actually doing that. I'm like, is this slick editing here? Like they're putting it in. They have Heather saying like, what are you singing from something else? <laughs> yeah, I mean, she can't help herself. I think like she's just, she's a talker, right? And she's just yeah. wears her heart on her sleeve. I think she's a great player. I think that, uh, that she played an awesome game. And uh, although, you know, it was funny when she was, she was leaving her final sort of confessional is just like, well, you know what? This was fun. This was a lot of fun. And then I'm like, was it Shan? Because sometimes <laughs> it seemed like you really weren't having a great time. But uh, Rick, De- Rick Devins had a great tweet uh, about that. And basically it had da, dun, dun, dum, dum, dum. It's like, oh, well, what are you singing over there? Oh, just the theme to Jaws, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not scheming or anything, you know, like, uh, <laughs> oh, that's a villain theme. It. Yeah. Any, anything <laughs> to add to this scene at the sanctuary, uh, Trey, were you just as shocked as I was that they were openly having this conversation in front of the other two and just like the, just their conversation again, this, this fascinating, like vibe that they have this like trust, but not trusting each other. And like, they just know what's going to happen. It's just like, Who's going to do it first? Because we don't want to do it to each other, but we know we got to. It's just, it's, you don't see that often in Survivor. Uh, totally. Uh, we only ever see the devious side of the friendships out there for the most part. And this to me was like seeing the real affection between them two, the reasons why they have been able to stay each other's number one up until basically tonight's episode. Uh, I loved it. I thought it was shot awesome too. Like what a great use of the old 8K cameras as they've been called. <laughs> yeah. Calling them into Survivor. Sure. Yeah, why not? Uh, but yeah, it looked really cool. And yeah, it was also super strange that they were having this clearly intimate conversation while Xander and Heather are just, just sitting on the other side of the couch. <laughs> like, and they don't even get a no word. What are you guys talking about over there? What are you chatting about? You like the pizza? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Pizza's great. Pizza's good. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I wonder if uh, Tim Duncan's brother was on the 8K camera right up there in their face. <laughs> yeah, we have to find that out. Uh, all right, cool, we're gonna though. we're gonna take our first break. Obviously, we have a ton of this episode still to break down. You know, the immunity challenge, the plot and scheming, what happens at tribal council. 
We'll get to the game within the game later. We're actually going to do it live on tonight's show. We're going to do the Rebus puzzle together. We're going to hear from Jeff. We're going to do the strategy test. Uh, so that'll be a lot of fun. And for the first time ever here on No Buffs, we're doing we're doing live tree mail. So everybody mm. that has joined us here live on Wednesday night after the episode, we'll take some of your questions uh, later in the show. But let's take a first break and we'll be right back. Every so often, a perfect confluence of events happens in a way that's better than anyone could have ever written. Like Vin Diesel showing up at an F1 race to hang out with Lewis Hamilton. The ideal meeting of two things in my world that even I wouldn't have guessed. Another one could be reading an ad for a sleep and meditation subscription called Calm that's endorsed by LeBron James the day after he's in one of the biggest brouhaha's of his career. But just like Vin and Lewis know cars, LeBron and Calm know that your mind is like any muscle in your body, but you don't have to be a world champion to train it. Calm can help you train your brain so you sleep better, reduce your stress, and perform at your best, just like King James. For LeBron, sleep is a critical part of his mental fitness routine. As the King says, getting good sleep and finding time to rest is one of the most valuable things I can do for my body and mind. From the sound of rain falling on leaves to bedtime sleep stories. Calm puts me to sleep within minutes, which means I wake up ready for any challenge. I'm guessing LeBron had the rain falling on leaves straight up blasting last night in Detroit. <laughs> for a limited time, our listeners can join LeBron in using Calm and get a 40% discount on a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash no dunks. Unlock content to help you focus, ease stress, and sleep better. Get started at calm.com slash no dunks. That's C-A-L-M dot C-O-M slash no dunks. Making content an essential part of what we do around here. You all know this. We're the content kings. But it hasn't always been a seamless creative process. In fact, I've always said the most difficult part of creating a daily NBA show isn't this part, isn't actually recording the podcast. That's easy. It's all the work that comes after the show is done. Cutting clips, creating thumbnails and graphics, social posts. It's all that time and effort that goes into designing and sharing content that used to be a headache. Oh my God. But ever since we found Canva Pro, we're laughing over here at No Dunks. Canva Aha! Pro is a design platform that empowers you to create and share stunning content in just a few clicks. Super fast, super fun. You can choose from thousands of templates that are easy to customize or you can just start from scratch. Canva Pro has endless premium fonts, photos, videos, and so much more that add a little personality, maybe a little edge to whatever you're designing. Did Edge show up at the Survivor Series over the weekend? I'm not sure. My favorite part is the functionality. Designing together has never been easier. Sharing, editing, commenting in real time. Canva Pro helps no dunks, your boys, stay organized. So we're all on the same page, on top of our team projects. No more, uh, misplaced files, Lily, or mm. tedious back and forth tasks. I don't know why I mm. threw your names on there. I just thought <laughs> I'd right. add a little something it to happens. the ad read. Uh, so design like a pro with Canva Pro. Right now you can get a free 45 day extended trial when you use our promo code. Just go to canva.com slash no dunks to get your free 45 day extended trial. That's C-A-N-V-A dot M-E slash no dunks. Canva dot me slash no dunks yes it's uh, almost that time of year guys and gals holidays families friends food fun most importantly fits not the bad kind like throwing a tantrum i mean the good kind the cool kind the fresh kind and there's never been a better time to upgrade your look indochino's black friday event has their lowest prices of the year on suits shirts outerwear and more plus you'll save even more using code no dunks I know I'll be feeling fresh and looking great after my experience online with Indochino because Indochino offers completely custom fitted suits, shirts, casual wear and more at surprisingly affordable prices. Measure yourself on the website in 10 minutes then wear your suit out of the box in 3 to 4 weeks which if my math is correct is just in time for Christmas. So you want to be looking great for those Christmas parties and get togethers don't you? So head to Indochino and do that. Every piece is made to your exact measurements and you can customize every detail, including the fabric, lapel, monogram, and statement linings. You can create a suit that suits you, sir, or your style perfectly, and your style perfectly. Best part, 
Indochino suits start from just $299 and shirts from $45 with all customizations included. They're basically giving them away at this point. Get away from the video calls and back into looking and feeling amazing. Indochino's Black Friday event runs from November 8th to the 29th, which is uh, on already right now. Save even more and get $50 off any purchase of $399 or more by using promo code NODUNKS at Indochino.com. That's $50 off a purchase of $399 or more at INDOCHINO.com, promo code NODUNKS. Okay, back with no buffs, recapping episode 10 of Survivor 41. This this one was titled Baby with a Machine Gun. <laughs> I think Erica <laughs> dropped that line uh, early in this episode. Uh, great line. So day 19, that's where we're at as we make our way through this up. Shan tells Liana she doesn't trust Deshaun. And then they have another very emotional scene. You guys already alluded to it. You know, reminiscing about the summit cry a long time ago. What day? I have no idea, JD. When were they together at the top of the mountain there? I mean, uh, it's been know. weeks for us, but days for them, really. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like maybe a week. I, I, it feels like a week. A week yeah. feels right. Yeah, it, it's something like that, probably. Uh, where they were, where they had like a very real bonding moment. Uh, you know, being being black women in the game, the, their mothers, and, and a lot of stuff in life. Uh, and so, Liana then tells Shan. The boys plan. They want to blindside Ricard. Shan goes to Ricard with the 411. He plays it very cool, I thought. Like an incredible level of cool being told like they're gonna blindside. He's like, let me just let me just think about it. Let me process this. <laughs> and she's like almost like, what? what? Are, is it weird that you're not more upset? Like, what, like what's going on here? Uh, and then again, they say, JD, at some point, like, we're going to have to fight each other. They say it again. Like, this is like the second or third time in this episode. Um, but yeah, you, you see this idea from the guys and Liana spilling the beans. I mean, saying to Shan, hey, they want to take out Ricard. And, the, and it was got it was getting a little cross. Like, the wires were getting a little crossed at first. I thought there, it was like, is it me? Shan saying, and it's like, no, it's Ricard. They want to do that. But, right, um, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, Leon is so tight with Shan. This is not surprising that she would tell her this stuff, right? Not surprising at all. And, uh, you know, it just goes to Liana's emotional gameplay that she's playing this game uh, very, very emotionally. She's taking everything extremely personal, uh, you know, as she did with whatever happened with her and Xander. And uh, she... She just the mere mention of betraying Shen is too much for her to bear. And yeah. she goes right and and tells her and which inadvertently blows up Shan's game, re really, because uh, it gets back to Deshaun and and Deshaun's like and Danny, who who are pissed that this this came out, that I think they blame Ricard, uh, uh, Shen for Ricard finding out. Yeah. Uh, they never mentioned Liana, but uh, maybe uh, maybe they don't know, or maybe they just well, you know. Ultimately, it was Shan that told Ricard, right? So right, uh, but and ultimately, that's Liana's fault, and that's just because she's she's a very emotional person. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and that's okay. Also, we, we they're also it. like Deshaun, especially, and even Danny, like. They're conflicted because they want to go together with the Black Alliance to the end, but they also know they don't like their chances maybe of beating her. She's made all these big moves. It's like, give me any reason to get rid of totally. her. Like, oh, she told Ricard she blew up the plan. Oh, she's gone. Sure. <laughs> like and now you're now you're dead to me. Like you're just searching for anything, right, yeah. Trey? Because you want to do it, but you're completely you're like, oh, I don't want to. It's like because you know they they're torn. But oh, that 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 happened. Okay. Yeah, you're, we'll get rid of you now. Now now we have no guilt, as I think is what they're thinking. Exactly. Liana and Shan gave Ricard a crack to give Shan the boot, right? Basically, yeah. by Liana telling uh, Shan about the plan to get rid of Ricard, and then I couldn't believe that Shan told Ricard before the immunity challenge about it. I thought that was a major, right. major error on Shan's behalf. To the point where even Ricard, like you're saying, Skeets, he was like, you're telling me? You're, yeah. you're, we had this conversation about voting each other out last night, and you're telling me that they're going to come vote me out? You're that secure with me? 
And that's when I knew I was like, oh, he he's ready to flip. He's ready so, to flip here. He's ready to keep his information to himself. I think that's how what he thought the conversation at the sanctuary was about. Like, we've come a long way together, baby, but it's over from here. We're fighting it out. Oh, you think we're still together? I've got a real opportunity here. And obviously he did. He took it. And uh, I think an incredibly smart play on his behalf. I looked it up. I don't know if my num if my notes are totally right, but it looks like day ten or day eleven is when Shan and Leanna went to Ship okay. Wheel Island. So a week and a couple days. Sure. <laughs> yeah, like nine days. Yeah. But I think it was the October twentieth episode for us. So literally <laughs> a month. But you can see why it's so fresh for her. They're like, yeah. we had this super powerful moment a week and a half ago. It still means quite a lot to me. Uh, but. At, that tiny little crack is all that Ricard needed. And it's all that little bit of distrust is all Deshaun and Danny needed to get roped into the plan as well. Yeah. It's so funny, JD. Like I get it. You have to do it because you want to have like plan A, B, C, D, like throwing names out targets before the immunity challenge, mm -hmm. you know? And like yeah. so many times I know it's the editing, but it's like so many times we're told here's the plan. Awesome. Yeah. What happens? That person wins immunity. And now it's like, well, crap. Now what are we going to do? But, you yeah, know, I don't, I don't like, see when how the it immunity, I, when the immunity challenge started, I was like, well, Ricard's winning. I mean, right. I mean, like, right. To the empty room, I, you know, like we're, <laughs> we're all agreed, right. If Ricard's winning this and he did. So. He did. Yeah. So let's get to the immunity challenge. Uh, it's the one we've seen this before you stand on a sort of a slanted narrow beam while balancing a ball on a, on a very small little platform, a little stand. Um, I thought Danny was in trouble right away. Did you see the shot? I know Propes loves it because he's a sicko. Um, <laughs> his giant ass feet, Danny's feet on the first <laughs> platform, which is by far the widest. He was already like spilling out over it. I mean, he's a professional athlete. He's a big dude. So uh, I was like, well, yeah, he is not long for this game. Liana drops first. Danny goes, right before the end of the first session because they do this in an interesting way right it's like what did what did probe say was it 15 minutes for the first time i know it was 10 for the second i could i missed the first one but it's like it's a specific time that you have to stand on that part mm -hmm. holding it at this part and then then you can touch it and like then we reset and then we go again but right. he dropped right before the first session ends which oh god Brutal. just you gotta do everything you gotta do what basically shan did that one time oh, where yeah. she's just like what a save one foot up and like yeah man just hold on for three seconds more but he didn't erica drops next that sort of happens in transition mm -hmm. i feel like that part would drive me nuts jd like the oh, uh right. okay you've made it now step forward you're a little more uncomfortable you're holding in a different spot and probes i mean He's probably like, you guys got 10 seconds, like you get 20 seconds, whatever it is. <laughs> You're like, ah, and you just got to find it right away. And yeah, totally. It seemed like she dropped sort of uh, again from the transition. Heather drops next. Shan does these crazy, crazy saves. You, Trey, you reacted to that. She like a couple times, like did the whole, like the wobble, 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 and then the one foot up. Yeah, it was impressive uh, totally. to keep it on. Anytime you could save it, I was like, wow. And she saved it like four or five times enough to, to stall out until the next uh, going on down the old ramp. Is this a good challenge, JD? I like it. I do like it. You don't think it's good television? <laughs> I was watching Shan go, whoa! Uh, whoa! Yeah, okay, I, I, yeah. I don't know. Wobbles I mean, are like, good. There wasn't it, a lot of wobbles, though, really, if you think about it. Like she, she was like the only one they really showed us like a wobble save, like a big wobble. Save. That's true. That's yeah. true. But you know, it's the same as watching somebody on the, 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 the Jesus one, you know, right. yeah. Just, yeah. you know, in Arms pain, back. at least there's some like, Whoa. yeah. And that's I've true. seen that challenge done on a particularly windy day. I feel like where, mm. where shit's just going everywhere. Um, but, uh, you know, <laughs> It's fine. I mean, you you get the tight shots of the beads of sweat on there, you know, and the tension and and <laughs> Jeff literally saying anything could distract you at any moment. <laughs> the whole key is not to be distracted. And I, like, well, nobody says, could you just shut up? Shut please? up. Yeah, it's literally the most the most distracting thing is someone saying anything could be distracting. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so you're doing a great job, Jeff. Uh, 100% with you. Yeah. So I Shango loved uh, Probst's line uh, during this challenge. Other than a few birds chirping, 
Not a single sound. <laughs> okay. <laughs> were those real birds or were those uh, production Ooh. birds? Oh, you think they were pretty. <laughs> the background music was uh, pretty well turned up. <laughs> uh, as for is this a good challenge? I just think that this cast, this is a great cast. Really funny. I think that like um, they're all very witty. But they're terrible at endurance challenges. Like yeah. they've had basically every endurance challenge. Jeff is like, all right, this one goes for six hours. <laughs> <laughs> Lasts for 15 minutes. Yeah. Right. I just think they're bad at long distance challenges. This one included. It could well, be better. I wonder we don't if, even get uh, enough uh like sweat faces, enough wobbles. That's why the, the cool ones stick out. I right. wonder how much uh not having a lot of food has it yeah, sure. in, in a lot of that. Also, I mean, maybe somebody in the in the live tribe right now in the stream team can tell me. I don't remember the balls they were balancing being that large. Mm. I thought they were much smaller before. They've definitely been smaller. And uh, huh. last week on, or a couple of weeks ago on Tyson's podcast, where they have the same challenges, but they do change subtle things about Yeah, they them, add right? more balls sometimes. More balls, yeah. bigger balls, small balls. <laughs> the platforms are different sizes. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, the Jeff and the rest of the crew, they're just, these endurance challenges, they want them to be as short as possible because yeah. they're out there work. Nobody wants to shoot nothing for six hours. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. And then it can also screw up. I've heard people talk about this ones that go like ridiculous amount of time, like six plus hours. I know there's the famous one that went way back in the day, like with 10 hours or yeah. even over that, but then it can like bump everything out of order, JD, and making a television show, right? It's like, right. well, we were supposed to get tribal council, <laughs> and right. uh, so much for that now. So yeah. that's pushed back, and then you got to scramble to fix it all. So you're right; they do want these to sort of these endurance challenges to not be all that enduring, I, I guess. But we get How down. About to they go to All Star Weekend Media Day, and they have to interview ten players. <laughs> Whoever gets it done first <laughs> wins the oh, immunity. Oh. I'm gonna break out into cold sweats thinking <laughs> yeah, about no that. Kidding uh down to three guys xander ricard and deshaun deshaun finally drops we're down to two and then ricard outlast xander to win his second immunity necklace and a guaranteed spot in the final seven uh jd did you did you give a little you know a little fist pump when uh ricard was ultimately the last one there i know your your team ricard i feel like a lot of people are they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're loving this guy but you must have been happy. I definitely did. There was a fist pump. And there was also this moment where I feel like he dropped his just right after because he literally asked, oh, did I win? Because it seemed like he didn't realize that he had, <laughs> that he had outlasted yeah. uh, uh, who was uh, Deshaun. Was it? Oh, it was uh, Xander. Xander, Xander, I Xander. think, was second. Yeah. 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 So it was just, yeah, it's possible. Like he, if he hadn't uh, kept the ball on the thing for an, an extra two seconds, he may have lost. So that's yeah. Crazy. Uh, I didn't get a chance to listen to Tyson on the, on the pod is spoken. Did he talk about, or maybe you've heard other, you know, uh, people that have been out there on the show. Can, if I fall and I'm walking by you, can I be like, ah! <laughs> nobody <laughs> ever does it. So I have to think that there's uh I don't, my gut says you can't, yeah. But once you're on the bench, you can say whatever you want, probably. Mm, that makes sense. Right? That like, I could sense. be sitting over there heckling you. I mean, mm -hmm. we've seen that sometimes. You don't even see that a whole lot. But it's almost uh, like uh, heckling in Survivor is cheering for who you want to not lose, right? You're like, if, it, if you want to vote out Ricard, you're like, let's go, Xander. You're yeah, really throwing right. your back into rooting for the other people. Yeah, I just would love, I would love to see somebody once, like they're down on the end, they drop and there's like three people and like, not, you can't hit them or anything, but you could scare somebody that's trying to like <laughs> concentrate. Like an NBA coach when a, an opponent shoots a three pointer in front of their bench yeah, like, like, ah! or something. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Kyle is right here in the uh, live tribe. I mean, probes would be pissed. I oh, he would be I, so I, heated. Again, like I'd like to hear from like Rob or, or Tyson or anybody that's been out there. I bet you can't do it. I, yeah. I I mean, I almost wonder, has somebody done it before and somebody has then dropped and do they reset? Do they say no? I mean, but why would you, stories. why would you want to? I mean, I mean, I get that if you want to vote somebody out and you want right. to fuck with their game, sure. But diplomacy is such a huge part of the game yeah. as well, right? Like, I mean, 
you see that they're, they're not allowed to talk until they get back to tribal. And as soon as everybody gets back, everybody's like, Hey, way to go, Ricard. Way to go. Was you were awesome out there, you know? And it's yeah. like, nobody means it. Nobody. <laughs> it's like, we wanted to vote you out, man, but uh, yeah. thanks for messing with our plans. So I don't know. I, I just don't think politically that would be a way to get jury votes or ingratiate yourself to your fellow, uh, cast members uh by you know screwing with them after you've already fallen off uh, you know <laughs> yeah i mean look it would help your chances of being cast as a villain on the next totally. season of survivor heroes <laughs> versus villains like if you really leaned into being an asshole yeah. like you're heckling every time they're telling oh, you to man, shut i'd up. love to see that <laughs> be amazing yeah uh so anyway nobody really does it you're right uh and they were very quiet i thought sitting over on the bench there they were not tipping their hand as to who they maybe wanted to see fall. That's the whole other part. You're right. Trey, you brought that up. It's like, uh, I, I don't even want to cheer for you. got to do the classic. Like you guys are looking great. All yeah. three of you guys are looking great. Hold it there. <laughs> You're like, Oh God, I hope Ricard drops. Cause our whole plan is to get rid of him. And he doesn't, he wins. So we get to plotting and scheming. We get a tornado shot though. That was cool. Yeah. Very cool. I, oh yeah. Have we ever seen that? A water spell? I, I don't know. Not not that I big. Couldn't, I couldn't recall that one. big. Yeah. Is that what that's called? A water spout? I think it's a water spout uh, or something like that. It's not an actual tornado. tornado. Yeah, right, right. Okay. Anyway, it looked cool as shit. Um, yeah. So we're back uh, on the beach here. Shan wants it to be Erica. Uh, and she wants, correct me if I'm wrong, she wants, just let's just put all the votes on her. We won't tell Xander a name. Mm -hmm. So he'll be a little concerned and he'll play his idol. Well, flush his idol. Erica goes home. We know she doesn't have one. We're good. But then Ricard's like, eh, this, no, no. Why would we do this? <laughs> Ricard wants to take out Shan again. I think he's, he's got that. He's drunk off the power of that immunity necklace. <laughs> and, uh, but I thought it was cool. Cause he's like, he only has four votes. Like with, with his plan, at least to take out Shan. And he's like, well, who are we going to get as a fifth? And he goes to Deshaun, who we've seen them already have like a, you know, a little bit of a weird interaction over the last couple episodes. I, I think their trust is sort of up in the air. And he approaches him, though, about the fifth and, and gets them ultimately because of this whole Deshaun and Danny being pissed off that Shan snitched on them, that it was going to be Ricard. And Ricard wisely uses that information, telling them, and then they're like, okay, yeah. Let's get her and let's blindside her. Um, Danny's a little torn. He thinks Erica's a dangerous player. I mean, he keeps really, really driving that home. But he also is pissed off with Shan. Um, so slick move here, Trey, from Ricard, man. Uh, <laughs> he's like, I'll strike first. Cool, let's go. <laughs> yeah, he's like, you literally gave me permission at the Survivor Sanctuary to make this move. And... You know, Shan almost signed her own papers on this one, telling him before he went to immunity. I don't know if it inspires him or it, at the very least, it gives him something to think about while he's up there trying to balance. But this scene was very funny to me. And it kind of reminded me of Fast and Furious 9, the way it started way back in Tokyo Drift. We thought Han died and then they pulled back and actually something else happened in the scene. And then we pulled back again in Fast 9 and something else actually happened oh, yeah. in that scene. Yeah, yeah. That was like this to me because it was like, Ricard decides he wants to get Shan. So he tells Deshaun. So then Deshaun tells Erica, but then Erica's like, hold on a second here. I don't want to accidentally get voted out. So then he, she goes and tells Danny and then Danny's like, wait, hold on a second. I want to vote you out. So it was like, yeah. anytime somebody talked to somebody else, that's who ended up next on the chopping block. I thought that was very funny, but I also was kind of getting nervous for this plan to go off smoothly when Erica decided she wanted to bring Danny in because yeah. she wanted to split the votes. Mm -hmm. That to me was a little bit like, you're asking a lot at this point to go from having three votes on the bottom who aren't really together at all in Erica and Heather, though I suppose they're together is what yeah. people have been saying, and Xander, to have those three on the bottom. And now suddenly you're trying to flip it where you have six of the eight people getting on board with the same plan against somebody with an idol in their pocket yeah. who has been running the game. I was thinking you're getting a little bit too ambitious here, Erica. You bit off a little bit more than you can chew. Let's just play it smooth here. You might get idled out. But I, that's obviously a risk she's not willing to take. 
Yeah. So she went and approached Danny, and I couldn't believe that it actually got done. Uh, I thought it was going to fizzle out at that point. For oh, sure. yeah. Well, so that just goes to to how dangerous Erica is. In the previous scene, Danny's like, "We got to get rid of Erica because she's very dangerous." Yep. And then, and then she's convincing both Deshaun and Danny to vote the way that she wants to vote, and it worked. Yeah, so. Danny <laughs> even says at one point, "Oh, that's a good plan." Yeah, and it feels like it feels like legit. He's like, "Oh yeah, we should yeah. actually split split the votes there and put three on Liana." Yeah, I mean, they did a good job of obviously not getting back to Shan, but more mm -hmm. importantly, in not getting back to Liana, any of this too. Totally, uh, because she's I assume going. R well, then she's in a tough spot because she's like, it's either me or her. Mm -hmm. uh, that'd be that would be sort of fascinating to see. Like if she had known. Shan's got the idol. I can't tell her to play her idol because then I'm definitely going home. She would have but, to vote for Shan. Yeah. No, yeah. True. True. Would she? Wow. I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, that's, it, her, it's, that's they, her. They definitely kept it from her because she voted for, what was her throwaway vote? Uh, for Erica. Yeah. Shan right. and her uh, voting for Erica. Um, so yeah, we're at Tribal Council. Uh, night, 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 no, no, night 19, easy to say. Um, there's a great line here. They're talking about like, are you part of the planning? Are you getting told the plan or are you just not hearing the plan? I mean, that's Survivor in a nutshell right there. That is uh, so, so good. Shan says the uh, we're all liars here part. There's a weird moment. We already talked about it between Shan and Erica. It's like saying, uh, yeah, we we did that whole Nasir thing. <laughs> like, from what I can remember, I thought Ricard did the whole Nasir thing. <laughs> but they were involved and uh, they sort of like compliment each other in a weird way. Probes, speaking of compliments, Probes just straight up compliments everybody on their answers. <laughs> this is a great travel council. Great I'm answers. loving these answers. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, all right. And, you know, we go up, they make their votes, Probes comes back. If everybody has a hidden immunity idol and want to play it, now would be the time to do so. And incredibly, again, how what, how many weeks is this in a row, JD? Is this, this is at least three. At least, yeah. At least three. I know he had uh, the necklace there, obviously, at 1.2, so that doesn't really count. That was last week. Um, right. So four, I guess. Yeah, Xander so doesn't yeah. play his idol again. Nope. Sits on it. No problem. And we get the uh, three votes each for Liana and Shan, and you see Shan realize right there. Yeah. Just like Nasir she last knew. week. Oh, crap. We're going to a revote. Oh, crap. I didn't play my idol. I'm going home. She, like... The daggers she throws at somebody walking up to, to to recast their vote is like wow, pretty pretty amazing, and uh, yeah, she is voted out with all of the votes if I if I remember correctly in the in the revote. I don't know if he got to the end, but yeah. oh yeah, maybe did we not? I, I don't know. Actually. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. She got she got obviously a majority of the vote there in the revote, and she gets up and says, "Ricardo, you have my vote for a million dollars. Deshaun, you're a snake." Peace out. Uh, what do you think of that, Jamie? I thought, why would you throw a target on your the, your closest ally in the game? Like, uh, you know, uh, if you're if you say, "Oh, Ricard, I'm going to vote for you to win a million dollars," you're a public enemy number one. Like that yeah. is a guaranteed jury vote. So I don't know. I, she obviously she was emotional and she was upset with uh, with uh, Deshaun and. Uh, if yeah, fair enough. Uh, Deshaun, uh, uh, you know, turned his back on her, uh, stabbed her in the back. Uh, but so did Danny, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. uh, but Deshaun got the brunt of it, I guess, because uh, they keep having these talks. They fight and they make up, and uh, they want to keep this alliance together. But they know that it has to end, and uh, she's she obviously blamed Danny for that. So yeah, uh, like the big difference here, it feels like Trey is like. Deshaun and Shan to each other be, because of the alliance they had, they were always saying final four, we're final four, we're final four, final four. And we learn in this episode, Rick Hart and Shan, even though I think we all would have assumed they've told each other we're final two, mm -hmm. we're final two, we're final two, never did. So it was like, it's almost like a brilliant play, especially by Ricard's side of things. Ricard did this. Ricard sent her ass home. Really? <laughs> and she's like, yep, oh, great job. I mean, she really respects him. She obviously thinks he's an incredible player. And I think she even realizes maybe she only pulled off some things because of him and what he thought up and putting it into play and all that. But yeah, she has no time for Deshaun. Uh, what do you think of her 
putting the target, like JD said, on Ricard even a little bigger. Maybe it doesn't even really do anything, Trey. Yeah. And then really what she said to Sean, like really like, you're a snake. <laughs> Well, I guess I would be curious, did she, was this reverse psychology where she's saying, where she's actually really mad at Ricard for voting her out, so she says, you're going to win a million dollars, which then puts the target yeah. on his back, like JD's saying, or is this Shan being Shan, new information comes in, and she reacts however she reacts, uh, says what's on her mind instantly, and then will perhaps consider what was actually said a little bit later. My guess is probably more so of the latter, but I was a thinking this was major sour grapes if i'm being quite honest like why does she call deshaun a snake when she told ricard deshaun's plan yeah that was very odd mm -hmm. to me but i mean when you get voted out like that when you've dominated the game and you get sent home with an idol in your pocket by people in your alliance and the person that you've said is your number one since the beginning you're gonna say some things that you don't really mean uh and yeah i mean i would be a completely heated as well if everybody turned on me uh, and I thought I was dominating. Yeah. Back to back weeks, JD. Somebody goes home with an idol in their pocket. Crazy. Will we make it three in a row Crazy. with Xander next week or, or no way? <laughs> I can't see it happening just because it's happened twice in front of him, <laughs> you know, like, uh, and he's also running out of time to play it. Yeah. I think he's only on the two tri tribal councils left. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, this, this goes back to, uh, Shan's reaction to Deshaun versus Ricard. It kind of goes back to the culture versus the game again, right? Like we had this tight Alliance, a bond that transcended the game that went outside of the game and was a statement that the four of us were going to make together. We all knew we were going to have to turn on each other eventually. Um, you know, so that's upsetting. That's very upsetting, obviously. But with Ricard, her it's it's like two people, two, you know, very close friends who are adversaries, you know, like you are my greatest adversary. Like that's their chat that they're having at yeah. the sanctuary. It's like, oh, we've had such a, a delicious run, but now <laughs> it will fall apart and you will do your thing and I will do my thing and it will be Shakespearean or whatever. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just it's it's too much it's too much pressure uh and i i agree with you trey i think uh heat of the moment and i think uh i think her 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 vote for the million dollars is is frankly still up for grabs i think <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like ricard and shan they had like a weird like kill bill vibe to them mm, yeah. like the the bride and uh bill uh, you know like there's like there's this love totally. but uh you know there's gonna be carnage they they know it there, there's repercussions um whereas she felt at least in the moment and you guys could be right i mean i i think the way shan is she was just reacting she loves ricard mm -hmm. she wants him to win that's my vote because he's outplaying all of you and felt really backstabbed by Deshaun because they kept having all of these powwows the next morning. Like, hey, we're cool. We're cool. We're cool. Mm. It's the four of us. And, you know, and that's just even how she found out from Liana saying like, they're doing this behind your back and they're going to take out, they're going to take out Ricard, which maybe in a weird way, it was almost like Mora, more of a gut punch to her. Like, right. oh, oh, okay. I see. I see how this is going. So yeah, um, Shan gone. I, I can't believe it. Uh, pour one out for Shan. Were I you think surprised Jane... she didn't play her idol? I was shocked when Danny said what he said, something along the lines of like, you think you've had a team and then you don't have a team. Mm. That guy is like the most team first player that's been on Survivor <laughs> in the past 10 years. That to me was like, you got to play your idol yeah. at this point. He's basically saying, I'm flipping on my alliance that I've had and I haven't flipped once yet. That was a little... Uh, I, I was shocked that that didn't like just set off an alarm for Shan to be like, something's up here. Yeah. I, I audibly said, what are you doing, Danny? Like, what? <laughs> don't say that. Right. You're good. You're blowing right. it up here. But uh, yeah, I agree. hundred percent. Like I, I do wonder when you have the idol and you obviously think you're safe and then you're also trying to flush another idol. Let's not forget about that part. Like her whole mm -hmm. plan was all votes on Erica. Don't tell Xander anything. And we get his out. And I th I just think you can get like, you almost like you're a little blinded by, oh, let, you're only focused on that idol that he has. And you're like, yeah, you're right, Trey. It's like, you should be really picking up on everything else and, and maybe play your own. But, you know, of course, I guess you feel safe. You're the mastermind. You're, you've come up with this whole everything on Erica. 
I'm good with my four. I'm good with like, she has four people that she felt really good with. That was the other thing. Like she's like, their numbers are good. We're fine. Like uh, we're, yeah. we're in the clear. So she didn't and, think and to, uh, to play it. Just playing armchair quarterback. If, if Shan plays her idol, Xander's playing his as well. Right. Like, what like what wow. can you flush it out just by saying okay i don't feel safe i'm playing this even if you do feel safe like i'm playing it for myself if i'm xander i'm going uh, okay well yeah <laughs> that's that's Shannon i bet you're right off. yeah I bet so you're right. i mean it, it, it takes a lot you would be sacrificing your own idol but you would be flushing that other idol from the another huge threat in the game so yeah yeah it's true um any final any final thoughts on Shan? Trey and get us started. I mean, do you think she was one of the the better players we've seen, like uh, in terms of a character on Survivor in the last couple seasons, or not? Great character, and I think going to be historically overrated as a great player. Um, you can't be one of the all time greats if you go home with an idol in your pocket. Yeah, it's that simple for me. Like that's a major, major faux pas. That's a guarantee to get you through a tribal council. You had it right there. Yeah. And, and to me now, when I look back on the Shan story, it's like you dominated against people who were happy to be there. Yeah. Beef Walton, JD. Basically, once you ran into people who were also playing Survivor, it didn't go smoothly right. for Shan. Like people were like, oh, she must be really hungry out there. She's making all these mistakes. Maybe she was just making mistakes. It's mm -hmm. kind of what I think because it was all mistakes once she got to the merge. And she basically got herself voted out in this one by uh, by spilling the beans on what the plan was going to be yeah. uh, to Ricard gave him a chance to see the crack that was forming there and get her voted out. But I hope she gets brought back. And I hope that when she does get bring, brought back, I think she'll be even better because she's obviously great at getting people to connect with her and relate to her and trust in her. She'll be a little bit smarter about the strategy side of things, I think on the second time through, because there's for sure she'll be back at some point. Yeah. Do you think she's a lock JD to play again? I mean, I, I if would love to, to see her again. Yeah. I, I, I feel like she's a lock, but we've said that about a lot of players <laughs> this season. So uh, we'll see. Uh, I agree a hundred percent with what Trey's saying. Uh, I think she was in the, uh, what's uh what is it? Triple a double a single a before you get to the major league. I think that's what her tribe was. Right. I, I put it a double a, just, okay. I'll be kind double a, double a. All right. And then she got to the major leagues and uh, she, pretty much got her ass handed to her <laughs> weekly. Um, and I also, you know, she was very, very good at connecting with people on an emotional level and having a sincere relationship with them. But she was also very good at getting on people's nerves a lot. Uh, Deshaun, especially. I mean, there was a, uh, a throwaway scene when Ricard in this episode, Ricard start, he starts telling the story of what happened with Nasir. And I don't know if you noticed, but Shan interrupts him immediately and takes over the story, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, which is the very thing that, that Deshaun couldn't stand uh, about her as yeah. well. Right. Like, it's just, she's a big talker. She, uh, but also a very nice person. And, uh, you know, but that sometimes very nice people can just get on your nerves, especially if you're spending all day, every day on a beach with no food and uh, mm. that is rampant with paranoia. <laughs> you know, yeah, in, right. Totally. Right. in playing for a million dollars. Yeah. 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 No, it's uh, I think she'll be back. I, that, I mean, I know you're right. We've said about a lot of people, but she's gone far enough in the game. She made enough moves. She has her own damn theme song for crying out loud. Yeah, that's like, true. <laughs> she's she's coming back, and it will be fascinating to see uh, what she, what she learned from playing out there the first time. Because uh, she is a great great character, and obviously oh, an yeah. incredible just story of her life is wild too. And she is really good at a lot of aspects of the game. So get even her vote off was like triumphant. There was like building strings yeah. during this as they went for the revote. It's like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but like the like Jurassic Park, her getting voted up, <laughs> powerful stuff. Yeah, she's back. You know yeah. when they're doing that, they're like they're, <laughs> they're setting us all up for uh, having Shan back, Shan 2.0. Okay, well we're gonna take our final break here. Hold on, one last thing from Immunity. As they're walking off, Tiffany says, "And Xander still got his idol." Mm -hmm. Oh, she did say she did say that. Yeah, yeah. This guy will not play his idol. It's impressive. Like he hasn't come close to playing it. Since he did the fake one for Liana and Shan, uh, <laughs> what that was like three episodes ago at yep. this point, 
If you want to flush his idol, here's a good plan. Vote for him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why would he play his idol if his name isn't ever coming up? You just yep. want him to play it for no reason? Come on. Yeah, he has done a great, great job of like just sort of fading back into the background a little bit, like letting these other power players, I guess, go at it, JD. And yep. they've forgotten about him and they have they know he's got an idol because they keep bringing it up. They're Because they, they want both. This is the thing. They're greedy. You're right, Trey. They want both things to happen. They want to get rid of player X, who's on the other side of you, who is a threat to win the game, or you don't want to see at the end. And they also want to get that uh, idol flushed, uh, you know. Just, but he's proven that you might just have to vote for him for, yeah. him, to, <laughs> yeah. for him to play it, because the guy's got uh, brass balls on him, man. This guy, Love it. it's crazy, and he's still there, and he's down to the final seven. It's crazy with with that. The only one left, right? I mean, we are. Are we down to just that being the only? That's advantage? the only idol in the game. Only advantage. There's no more yes, extra votes. I think you're. Wait a minute. Doesn't does he, he have an have extra, extra vote, vote as well? Well, he does. He does. Yeah. I Holy think so. Crap. You're right. Deshaun's gone. Shans was gone. Obviously, mm -hmm. she's gone now. Anyway, of course, Nasir and Shan, their idols are gone. Yeah. Okay. Well, I forgot he had the extra vote. Crazy, right? Holy, holy, and uh, that could be huge when you're down to seven people. One yeah. being safe, winning uh, obviously the immunity necklace. I mean, six people are going to be in play here. Wow, wow. I think Xander's making it to the finale at least. I think he's going to be final five. He may, he may have a shot at fire even. Uh, yeah, to, to stay that's alive possible. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to take our final break here. While we do, everybody that's joining us live here on Wednesday night, get your questions in. We'll do a little live tree mail. If you got a question, if you got a comment, we'll touch on a couple of them. We've got to do the game within the game uh you know we have to and uh then we'll look ahead to next week's episode and make some predictions we'll be right back so uh guys um i've uh, searched for a lot of uh sus stuff on the internet uh i'll throw out some examples yeah. uh, i recently googled the effects of canine shock collars on humans that's for possibly a pick and payoff coming up, but uh, don't worry, Skeets. It doesn't seem that detrimental. I've searched for spanks for men. Not Ooh. gonna lie. Uh, I googled Evan Fournier just to see. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't do it. Big mistake. Big yep. mistake. Don't do it. And I know what uh, most of you are probably thinking. Uh, why don't you just use incognito mode? Well, let me tell you something. Incognito mode does not hide your activity. It doesn't matter what mode you use or how many times you clear your browsing history, your internet service provider can see every single website you've ever visited. Oh my God, I gotta get ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers so your ISP can't see the sites you visit. They don't need to know about all that Velma cosplay you look at. <laughs> it keeps all of your information secure by encrypting 100% of your data with the most powerful encryption available. Most of the time, I don't even realize it's on. It runs seamlessly in the background and it's so easy to use. All you have to do is tap one button and you're protected. Protect your online activity today with the VPN rated number one by CNET. Visit our exclusive link, expressvpn.com slash noducks, and you can get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn, E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash noducks. Expressvpn.com slash noducks to learn more. I'm guilty of buying cheap socks, and I regret it every time. Ah, you know, I'm shopping for other stuff, and then I'm at the end. Oh, suggestion, throw this in your cart. Yeah, okay. I get them, put them on the first time, and I think, ah, oh, yeah, fresh socks. Feels good. And I wash them once, just once. And it looks like they've been used for years, and the cushioning is gone. Happens all the time. Stance socks are absolutely not like that. Wash them and wash them and wash them. They remain super comfortable and soft, and they look the same because they are durable. I have a nice midnight black pair that has some stars on them. They're a creative bunch, those stance developers. They have all sorts of collabs with Harry Potter socks, Batman, The Goonies, Star Wars, The Office, Wu-Tang, Jill Perkins, Disney, Barbie, Marvel, Bob Marley. It goes on and on and on and on and on. And their boxer briefs are very nice, too. 
not too tight around the thighs. They don't bunch up, <laughs> kind of like Spanx, JD. And they are super breathable, very valuable venting ventanas in the bottom of them. Stance has the perfect gift for every punk and poet on your list. Like the Beastie Boys or Post Malone. Go see for yourself. It's easy. Just head on over to stance.com and pick out some styles you think they might like. Enjoy the color and comfort of a life less ordinary with Stance. All right, back with no buffs here. A little tree mail, live tree mail from some of you joining us here tonight on a Wednesday after the episode on the East Coast. Uh, this one's just a fun one from Cold, not really about uh, last night's episode or this season even, but what are y'all's favorite all-time Survivor duos? JD, does anybody come to mm-hmm. mind? Well, off the top of the head, uh, our, our man Wendell and Dom, Yep, uh, they were uh, a great pair. I liked uh, Scott Pollard, and I think his name was Jason. <laughs> yeah, the guy with the big beard those? like you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they, w- when they found themselves on the bottom, all they did was wreak havoc. Like they just, <laughs> yeah. uh, they were just like the sorest <laughs> losers of all time. And they basically, you know, put out the fire and hid food and all that stuff. Uh, who else? There was uh, Earl and Yao, uh, Yao Man. Remember that? Remember when yeah. Yao Man was uh, great. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm cheating, looking at some lists here, but I got to give a shout out to Denise and Malcolm. Oh yeah, a great unexpected uh duo, and uh, they got a lot of love earlier this season when it was looking like Ricard and Shan might be able to. Are they like? Are they Matt Singh? Is that what their tribe name is, or something like that? Where everybody got voted out except for the two of them. Oh yeah. Maybe it's yeah. Pagong. I don't know. It's yeah. one of these. It's one of these tribe names that has become a verb when you get down to the last two from your tribe, but you stick together and are right. able to pull it through. They were a great match. Uh, much like Dom and Wendell, when it got down to it, at the very end, you're like, either of these two could win and it would yeah. be awesome. They both completely deserved it. Yeah, what we about brought- uh, Boss and Rob and Amber? A, a Amber. legit bona fide romance on the show. It's crazy. And they both won and... They televised awesome. their wedding, <laughs> which I watched the whole thing. <laughs> and I think maybe even crazier, they're still together and, yeah. and have like what four kids or something I, like that. I think it's four kids. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that is pretty amazing. Uh, we always bring up uh, Stephen Fishback and JT. That was yeah. uh, a fantastic one from uh, Token Jeans. I like uh, <laughs> I like a Courtney and Sandra too, mm. uh, because they were comedy relief those two just like shitting on everybody and like wise cracks of everybody so it's like heroes versus villains they were uh together but yeah there's there's tons so great hey, question what Cole. about uh sorry what about this guy what about yeah. penner, <laughs> what about this duo? penner and uh the woman from facts of life uh what was her name uh lisa lisa, lisa. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice and he call. was like so starstruck by her <laughs> and they just had this sort of uh this very weird relationship, but uh, I loved it. It's, it's great chemistry. Uh, here's a question from Edgar. A few weeks ago, JD said that the episode with the live tribal was not the best, you know, for the for the first time viewed. Well, it was mine, and mm-hmm. I loved it. So now I'm trying to get friends to watch. Uh, what season should I suggest? Uh, this is a very uh, popular question. J- J- JD, we'll start with you. Do you have a, well, do you have a season all- that you tell people? We always say heroes and villains. Uh, I loved, uh, I loved both blood versus water. Mm. Uh, the idea uh, that's when you come on with a loved one, and uh, I think they separate you, your tribes, right? Uh, off have, the bat, yep. yeah. Um, that's that's good. But also, uh, I was listening to uh, Rob has a podcast, and Mike Bloom had uh, had Ali Gertz on the show, and her first season was Winners at War, uh, season forty, and uh, she, she said it was awesome. So, uh, and it was. I mean, it was great, but it was just like, wow, what a season! Like to jump in where <laughs> everybody has won. Uh, it's like watching. It's like Lee Ellis watching the '87 All Star Game. <laughs> yeah, his first, uh, yeah. I mean, know. it will it will hook you. I guess totally. the only problem with that is like, well. <laughs> You just spoiled 20 seasons of Survivor for totally. Off, or... <laughs> and that, you know, and that's exactly what she said. But she went back and watched, watched yeah. them all. She was like, I just attempted to erase my memory and uh, yeah. <laughs> and go back and watch them. And they were still just as enjoyable for her. There's a couple on Netflix right now. Is there not a uh, Trey that people can yeah. watch? And I think one of them's re- yeah, season 37. That's a good, that's a great season. Yeah. Yeah, David versus Goliath yeah. as Michael O'Brien is saying in the live tribe. My sister just started rewatching this one. I think this is the one that just dropped on Netflix and 
great cast in this one. Some great moments. Uh, you've got the jacket moment. Uh, uh, yeah. Something you don't want to spoil. Uh, uh, some <laughs> other great characters. Uh, the mayor of Slamtown is in this one. Christian Hubicki is in this oh, one. Great one. Mike White. And this is a, it's a great season. David versus Goliath. Yeah. Okay. Check that one out. Uh, here we go. Evan writes here in the live travel. Trey, you didn't think too highly of Shan. Do you see her as a J.R. Smith slash a rational confidence player? And what other NBA equivalents do you see in the remaining players? Uh, I'm putting you, of course, on the spot here, but do you think there's something to the Shan, uh, a rational confidence type player, um, you know, vibe? Uh, yeah, okay. I would say that Shan is Tyreek Evans. Hmm. Rookie of the year okay, over Stephen Curry. <laughs> Yep. One of the, uh, I think he was the first player after Michael Jordan and LeBron to average 20 points, five rebounds, yep. and five assists per game. Right. Some historic stuff. Put up some major numbers his rookie season, and that was kind of the highlight. Started off strong, and then eventually he was out of the league, obviously far before Stephen Curry was another player in his draft class. And that to me is what Shan was. I think it's just interesting I think Shan is an awesome character, but not such a great player because she only had like two thirds of the game and you need the social piece to be able to win it as well. And sometimes her social game was there and her strategic game wasn't there or her strategic game was there and her social game was a little bit off. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, the player she reminded me most of is early Russell Hans, where she's like, if I dominate this game and tell everybody what to do, they're going to have to vote for me. They're right. simply going to have to give me the reward at the end, but it didn't work for Russell and obviously didn't work for Shan either. That being said, first time Russell was on, he was one of my favorites as well. I yeah. mean, there are just some characters who it's like are so hell bent on dominating that you hate the way they go about it, but it makes them awesome to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's exactly where Shan fits in for me. That's great. Uh, this is a two parter here from Sam. Uh, JD will get your take on it. I thought it was really good. He says, I don't have a good read on Danny. It seemed like he wanted to be in on the action this episode, but he ended up one, not making the plan and two, not staying loyal, which mm. has been his hallmark this entire season. Then Sam goes on to write, is it too late for Danny to make a big enough move to beat anyone outside of Heather, Erica, or Liana? Uh, wow. This, this Danny conundrum. I brought it up last week. I'm like, what is this guy doing? He I, is I, an he's a bit of an enigma. It's true. Yeah. I mean, I would argue that he was part of the move to get rid of Shen and Leanna. I mean, uh, he was at, definitely uh, didn't spearhead it, but he was part of it. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he could he could he can take just as much credit as uh, Leanna could have taken it if they, they had taken out uh, Ricard. But uh, aren't yeah, you surprised, though, what Sam says, like all we've heard from this guy, loyalty, loyalty, right. loyalty. And in the end, he was not loyal. I mean, he thought yeah, he but had this a good was... enough reason to vote against Sham. But I mean, I mean, I thought if anybody was going to be like, "No, guys, we are taking the four of us to the end. We are doing this." Right. I, you know, I thought he would be championing that a little bit more, and and it, at least from what we saw, he he sort of gave up on it pretty quickly too. Well, but he was also felt betrayed by Sham. I know. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's you know, I I'm loyal, but I'm not a fool. If she's going to <laughs> You know, if she's going to betray me, then I, that's the end of my loyalty. And, and that's how people are on Survivor. We've heard previous players talk about that before. You you mention my name, you're dead to me. I'm not, you know, <laughs> forget it. Like, it doesn't matter the the alliance that we have. It, mm -hmm. It's uh, it's over. And uh, so I wouldn't say that he's not loyal. He's definitely seems like he's still loyal to Deshaun. Cool. And he's been loyal to Deshaun this whole time, you know. Can I mean, he beat Deshaun at the end? Great question. Great question. I think it's very similar relationship to Shan and Ricard, where Shan was the star and out in front of all the votes, similar to Deshaun, who is the star between him and Danny, and Danny's a little bit more in the background. So to me, the question of can he beat anybody besides Erica and Heather, that's the way he wins is by getting like his big moves would have to be getting rid of Deshaun, getting rid of Ricard, and then being the champion of those and saying, hey, I got rid of these two huge threats. I flipped the script on them. I flipped the script on Shan as well. And then, yeah, he's sitting there with players that don't have a strong resume and his is looking pretty good. But uh, if it ends up somehow being like Danny and Deshaun, I think people are looking at Deshaun more so. 
I think you're uh, right. It also, but it also depends on the jury and how they're adjudicating things, right? Because we are, sometimes we get a ju- jury that's all about the gameplay. It's all about the moves, right? Mm-hmm. And then we have sometimes a very jilted jury, <laughs> you know, like, uh, you betrayed me, so I will never, ever write your name down. So I'll vote for Heather before I vote for you, Deshaun. I mean, I'm not saying that that's... But I'm uh, like, like, Shan is voting... Is Shan... If it's Heather, Danny, and Deshaun at the end, like, does Shan vote for Danny? <laughs> because it, Does she hate yeah. Deshaun enough that he's never getting her vote? But they're so linked together. You're right. This is the weird part. It's like they, they seem so tied at the hip, Danny and Deshaun. It's like, yeah, maybe, maybe she's like, well, screw it. I'll give it to Heather. <laughs> I don't think she would do that. But... No, I don't think so either. But you know, I, I, can't see a path seven votes. I can't see a path for him to win. I can't see a path really for Heather to win, of course. Erica, I've come around on. I'm still not really convinced. It's like, I guess that, you know, you're getting down to how is it not Xander? Deshaun, Deshaun or Ricard, right? I mean, that's what it. That's what it feels like. And I don't see Liana winning either. Is the other is the four. It's like I see right. three winners. And I see four non-winners. That's. Mm. But then again, you get rid of those three people that I thought that could possibly win the game, and it's down to four of those people that I didn't think would win the game. That one of them is winning the game. So, uh, it could be pretty wild. Um, I would. I mean, that's why I sort of love uh, Ponderosa. Although I haven't watched any of this season yet, but it's just as people start streaming in they start to find out all the shit that was happening behind their back. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And that, that, that factors in more than we think, right? Like it's like, okay, we're all back in Ponderosa. The game's over for us. Let's break it down. And all they're doing is talking about yeah. all the bad stuff that happened to them and who did what to whom. And I, I can't believe that that guy said that what he said, that kind of thing, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so I kind of wish there was more of that, like that we saw both going into the finale, you know, like, uh, I guess we do, we get to see what the behind the scenes, uh, goings on, like the, uh, the scheming and stuff. But, uh, but yeah, it's like when it's how those jurors react to finding out that, Oh, you were gunning for me two tribal councils ago. Hold on. Like, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like everything is like finding out your girlfriend's been cheating on you this whole time. It's like, Oh, but we were back together now. But yeah, but three months ago you were like, uh, you were ready to vote me off the Island. Yeah. I love then finding out how people react to that because some people like you, you screwed me. Damn. You're good. You're You're right. Better than me. You got me. You deserve my vote. Or other people are like, screw you. Like, uh, (laughs) you know, you you blew my chance at a million dollars. Why would I give you, the million dollars. Yeah, that's that's the beauty of the game. Um, so next time on Survivor, just quickly, these are always very, very short, but Liana is pissed with Danny and Deshaun, like really, really upset. Like, you know, now that I think about it, maybe Liana more than Danny really wanted to get the four of them uh, to, to the final, the, the, the Black Alliance, uh, at least in that reaction that we see. We get Xander telling Ricard, they're gunning for you. Yeah, no shit, Xander. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I mean, that was pretty apparent. I guess maybe Xander didn't know that, but now he's telling him that. And then Trey, Jeff Probst, at one point in this little preview says, there's a twist. Uh-oh. But yeah, it looks like they're at a challenge when he says this. So maybe Definitely. You know, the twist is about the challenge. I mean, uh, do you have any predictions what the heck Probst has up his sleeve? A twist this late? I don't know, Skates. And also, like, pretty nondescript challenge. I think they were on the water, uh, but you couldn't, <laughs> right. like, look in the background to see really what was going on. So, who knows? I mean, there was – we talked about advantages and idols, like, crazy through the first, like, five episodes, and then nothing. Uh, yeah. We had the big blow up with Leanna and Xander and the fake idol. Haven't seen a real idol played yet, so who knows what's coming in this next one. Oh, there's been way more, like – play with extra votes and like screen time with extra votes about people holding on to them and giving them back and then using them to like, yeah. Idols JD outside of Xander always like bluffing with his that we all know he (laughs) has. Yeah. Not, not a lot, but this guy has to play this. I mean, if he doesn't win, if he doesn't win immunity, he can't, he, he has to play it. (laughs) Maybe he won't. This guy's crazy. He's nuts that way. Why, uh, why don't we just away? flush it what if not he... voting at him? Yeah, yeah. Well, What'd you say, JD? Yeah. What if he gives it to somebody? What if, like, oh. I'm playing this for somebody? Oh, God. Can you imagine? 
he's look if he can get there if he can get to the to the fire challenge and, and mm. make fire and, and get his ass into the final three he's got a great chance to win this game for sure um all right let's do a little game within the game real quickly here I haven't done it yet i'm gonna add it to the stream uh this would be a little weird for all of you listening maybe but you know <laughs> a little surprise for uh everybody uh being loyal to us here on a Wednesday night, joining us on YouTube. Okay, so here it is. It's the game within the game. Um, let's uh, let's let's take a look at the puzzle. Okay, guys. All right, let's do it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna figure this out together. Okay, that's a back. That's a cup. That's <laughs> back up. Uh, yeah, it's true. Back up. Four uh, crabs. That's four crabs. That's, that's four crabs. Four. Back up. So back what's up. that mean? Back up for grabs. Nice. Back All up right. for grabs. Good job, guys. <laughs> What, uh, what a stance on that back. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's throw that in there. Let's see what Probes has to say. I think I have the audio on, so this should work. Oh, here we go. Pop up, Jeff. You did it. 10 for 10. <laughs> I got to admit, one of the reasons I like saying back up for grabs is that I know it annoys some people because it is redundant. Grammar, not my strong suit. <laughs> Once again, and back up is basically saying the same thing twice, but some <laughs> phrases I will amend after 21 years. This one, yeah, I think I'm gonna keep it. All right, you know the drill. Once again, you have another word scramble. We're getting so close to the end, and then we'll have a strategy test. Get on it. <laughs> that's, that's one of the weirder ones yet. We got to do these all live from yeah. now on. <laughs> oh, a five-letter word. Ooh. Guys. Ooh. Guys, okay, let, let's solve it. Does anybody got it really quickly? That's Good. rough, right? Rough. rough, yeah. Good call, yeah. yeah. Wow, nice. that's an interesting. <laughs> oh, is it? Yep. You okay. did it. Yeah. Okay, let's see what Probe says. Yeah, He's it's what fired he... up now. <laughs> you did it. You got it. You know, I say some crazy <laughs> things. I'm not changing this. All right, here's this week's strategy test, and it's a nod to next week's episode. You make a big move, and it works, and everybody's mad. What do you do? Do you apologize? Go on the apology <laughs> tour that you've seen happen on Survivor. Like, I'm so sorry, I didn't know, I didn't know. Or do you own it and say, I'm playing the game just like everybody here, and I made a big move. It's, again, one of those philosophical situations because if you start to grovel and apologize and you make it to the end, you might have given permission to the jury to say, even you admitted you played a poor game and made bad decisions versus saying, I stand by everything I did. I'm sorry you guys are mad. I hope we can find a way to work together, but I made the move that I thought was best for me. What would you do? Hope you're enjoying Survivor. 41! Wow. Okay. Come on. That was 41! <laughs> that, that was rough. Uh, would, you... would you say sorry? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could have said that in three seconds there. Uh, I mean, who's he? Is he alluding to Ricard for what the uh, no, move he just did or Deshaun, something? It's Deshaun and Leanna. Deshaun. Are you is Deshaun yeah, apologize yeah, yeah. to Leanna about uh you know being yeah. a snake, I guess. Yeah. Um what do you and think should he, he? No, of course not. Of no, course not. no. Okay, so we got rough there. Is anybody seeing any uh you know cryptic sayings like we remember last time we figured out like nasir was going home because it sort of sounded like nasir, <laughs> uh, nasir. No, 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 <laughs> yeah. not a lot there so there we go we have one one word left wow. obviously there's more episodes left and if you're new to the show here i'm convinced these words are going to come into play in the actual game of survivor game within the game is in the game i think it's happening <laughs> i uh, hope I it's true yeah, I, I mean, I have to keep running with this theory now. Okay, but like, also, like, what is the final play here? Just game within the game style, not taking it to yeah, Survivor. With, are, with, are you supposed to use all of those words then? They don't make a sentence. Yeah, so what you're, what you're <laughs> saying what is next episode, be? after the episode, I'm going to go to game within the game. I'm going to do that last one. I'm going to do the last puzzle. I'm going to get the last word. I'm going to unscramble it. And then what happens? You're and right. And then what happens? Yeah. Like, do you like, scramble up these words, the letters in these words? I don't um, know. Maybe. But I think the video is going to be props going, congratulations. You did it. You unlocked all the words. Now you're not going to believe this. On next week's <laughs> show, these words are going to be involved in a challenge. I mean, that is definitely possible. Like That's a possible, a, like yeah. a concentration style, you know, like something, a, something. something. Yeah. yeah. 
So I think that's happening, guys. Oh my God. Oh, uh, <laughs> it'd be great. It'd be so great because I've wasted everybody ta- everybody's time all season long with these stupid games. Of the games. I'm, uh, I'm, I will be taking credit for your oh. being right about this the way that Liana is going to would have taken credit for getting rid of her car. <laughs> oh, interesting. Interesting. I'll remember that. I'll remember that. All right, guys, we're going to call it there. Thank you so much to everybody who joined us live tonight. Uh, if you're a fan of no buffs here and our survivor breakdowns, leave your boys five-star rating and review wherever you listen to this podcast, Apple, Spotify, subscribe, comment, like the video. If you watching either live or later here on no buffs youtube we really appreciate it our numbers started ticking up there i think we found some uh found some survivor fans out there there's a lot of great shows already but uh you know you can never you can never hear have too much survivor talk in, in my mind i mean i listen to all their shows too why not listen <laughs> yeah. to us uh wax about it for 90 minutes uh we are back to our regularly scheduled program next week so thursday december 2nd around 5 5 30 uh, PM Eastern with the incomparable Jason Concepcion. He will be back. Uh, we had to do this live tonight because we got Thanksgiving tomorrow. It's all good. Had a lot of fun, guys. Um, any any last uh, last minute preps there for Thanksgiving? Are you guys good to go tomorrow, or are you throwing the, throwing the bird in the oven now? I don't know how it works. What do you, what do, you do? Oh, we I had a, a we had a Christmas story uh, um, all situation here where Lincoln, my son, is. Yeah. Uh, brining a turkey but it won't fit in the fridge so we had it in a tupperware container outside Uh, it's cold yeah we just had two dogs show up like big dogs (laughs) like so i I would literally chase them away with a broom and brought the thing inside so that was during the immunity challenge and so it was like all hell was breaking loose and i was like get out of here i gotta go watch (laughs) Oh, so you're saying those dogs wanted a little turkey <laughs> under the stars. Yeah, they, they were looking for a turkey. Wow, that's <laughs> wild. Okay. Yeah, but the, the, the bird's okay. The bird's okay. The dogs went home, I think. But uh, yeah, what a night. What wow, a night. what a night. What a night here on No Buffs. And Trey, I know you're doing a lot of cooking. You, you good to go there for tomorrow? Uh, Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, <laughs> we're, 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 we're prepped for tomorrow. I'll okay. say that. The, tomorrow's the big day, obviously. We'll see how it goes. Um, my best prep moment this week, I actually had a nice survivor moment. Uh, we were leaf blowing outside <laughs> over the weekend, and we get them all onto a big tarp, and then there are four corners of a tarp. Laura's mom was in town, so we had three adults. We needed a fourth. Isla, Ada, come hold this fourth. Help us carry this to the front. It's going to be fun. It ain't that heavy. It's just dead leaves. You'll be able to carry it. Yeah. But it's heavy for them. They're seven and five. Of so I'm like, oh, it, it's falling out of my fingers. It's falling out of my fingers as we're walking from the back to the front yard. As they're doing it, I'm like, you got to treat it like Survivor. You got to dig deep. <laughs> <laughs> if you turn anything in your house into a Survivor challenge, get it done a lot faster. You're like, oh. Oh. I should be, if I'm ever going to be on Survivor and I want to win a challenge, I got to be able to carry a 50 pound bag for, for a little bit longer than I think I can. Yeah. Well, you, you, said, you, you said your girls love the uh, challenges too, right? They love the challenges. Yeah. yeah. They're big challenge beasts. Yeah. They don't care for the strategy talk all that much. Yeah, talking? Uh, boring. It's <laughs> <laughs> a great point. Uh, yeah. There's something for every everyone in uh, Survivor. Okay, guys, we'll call it there. We will see you with no dunks on Monday, no buffs on Thursday, December 2nd. With with uh, Jason Concepcion. Uh, Until then, the tribe has spoken.